Hi, this is Gimme a Milk. In this video we'll look at this application CopyTrans and a method it uses to prevent you from attaching a debugger such as Ollie to its process. So we've got the application running here. Um, meanwhile we'll start Ollie running. And rather than open we'll choose attach and find the CopyTrans process here. Hit attach and oh process terminated. So the copy trans application, as soon as you try to attach the debugger, uh, it terminated. To investigate what was causing the process to terminate, I did some searching on the internet for information on exactly what happens when you debug a process in Windows, and I came across this document, which I highly recommend. It goes into an incredible amount of detail about exactly what happens when attaching and debugging a process. Um, essentially, it ends up in creating a thread in the process you're trying to debug uh, originating at this function dbgui remote break-in and that validates that it is in fact being debugged and then issues a breakpoint so I thought maybe examine what's going on in here in the the copy trans process so back in Ollie I'll reload the process and right click and choose search for name in all modules. Uh, this is a box of everything that's loaded across different DLLs and I can find dbgui remote break-in. There it is. So I can double click on the export and the code kind of matches what was written in that document. There's a, a call to breakpoint in there. So that looks fairly innocuous. But watch what happens if I run it. This is the start of the function here, E13. and it changed. It's now just a jump to exit. So it looks like CopyTrans is protecting itself by patching that dbgui remote break-in function and just making it jump straight to exiting instead. So what we'll do is write a C program to patch it back to its original value and allow us to attach the debugger. If I choose in here following dump selection, let's grab the bytes the first however many bytes of the patched version of the function and copy that and just bring up notepad and paste it. So we'll make a note that that is the patched version of the bytes and back to Ollie you can simply hit reload and go back to that function there it is, double click again, so this is the unpatched version so we want to patch it back to this so again following dump selection and then we'll grab those there and copy them now let's examine here, if you look closely you can see that there's only actually the first five bytes that differ between the two cases, this is patched. After the first five bytes the rest of the code is the same so all we need is these five bytes to write them into the process address space of CopyTrans at this address. So let's open our code editor and make a new file and we'll call it ctpatch.c CopyTrans patch now I need the Windows headers and we'll just make it a normal C startup now to write to the address space of another process you need a handle to that process and in order to get a handle you need the process ID which is just an integer and we'll get that from the command line and to open a handle on that process now we need to declare a handle and make a call to open process we need all access because we're going to be modifying its address space we need false because we don't want to inherit the handle in a child process and the PID and we'll check that we got a valid handle back from that If 
we did it we'll just quit and remembering to close it when we're done okay so we've opened the handle to the process there we also need a 5 byte buffer and the bytes that we're going to patch and we go back to notepad for those that is these here so we'll copy those go back to the code and paste in there and then we just quickly need to make it C friendly So there's our patch byte. So first things first, we'll read the current contents. We can do that by calling read process memory. The handle we have already got. Um, the address within that process address space is that. And we will read it to our local buffer and we'll read five bytes. Uh, I'm ignoring all error checking for now. Um, Obviously, if you have more time, you'd put in proper error checking code. So the state of the memory before, we'll just quickly print out the five bytes like that. we'll try patching to so that again same address with our patch bytes 5 again and then we'll reread it so we can verify that it's changed and call it after and one other thing we need to do because we're generating executable code it's always a good idea to flush the instruction cache in case there's any stale code bytes in the instruction cache and we'll just flush the entire thing okay so that's the program so let's try compiling and running that now I'm going to use the SIGWIN compiler again and because I'm not in Visual Studio this define doesn't automatically get set which is the Windows version and you need it to in order to use the APIs properly so I'll just manually put that here and what's the name of the executable and it's ctpatch.c okay these warnings are because I haven't cast these hard addresses to pointers so we can just do that quickly recompile there we go okay so let's kill Ollie and bring back up copy trans and while well, that's loading up there it is and to get the PID, the process ID I can just run task list and there it is copy trans and the PID is 1856 so if I now run CT patch with 1856 there we go so before they're the bytes that matched where copy trans and patched itself to jump to exit and after is the 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 unpatched the original version so now we should be able to reload Ollie and just attach as normal so go to copy trans Remember before this just caused the copy trans to terminate whereas now it's loading all the DLLs and hopefully 
it won't terminate this time. And there we go, so we've attached successfully to CopyTrans and we can debug it as normal now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.